Hello and welcome to another video from Double R Rail. This is a, uh, another Loco Works Wednesday video, and today we're going to show you how to um, get a uh, Class 53 uh, Falcon uh, from Halogen um, ready to go on the layout. Now, this one's already been run in, uh, ran it in in either direction for about half an hour or so, and it's working really well. Actually, uh, it's a very heavy locomotive, and it's uh, it's pretty nice and it uh, you know it handles the, the double rail layout really really well and um, the halogen haven't actually fitted a lot of the uh, extra detailing parts uh, they actually gave you uh, two different sets uh, one for uh, more functional uh, shallower um, buffer beam and the other one is a more uh, deeper uh, prototypical buffer beam so today I'm not actually going to um, do that part of it uh, going to require some more research get some photos and so on so if you need them all railways um, typically, uh, what you'll get is you'll get a very vague uh, set of instructions, right? So um, here you can see the local we have is run from um, 1961 to 1962. Um, we'll have some uh, information about the loco, telling you to run in, so on, and where you can get spare parts. Uh, it'll tell you how to um, attach the uh, DCC as well as how to kind of basically open it. Um, it also tell you, um, you know, that you can use CCC to configure a consistent brightness for the head code illumination and so on. And uh, it tells you how to access it, which is basically to gently pry the body part, body shell away from the um, chassis. Um, you get a spare parts list, so you can see all the various um, different parts and their numbers. And if you look in the bag, you'll see that these parts have a number up here, so the ones that are not attached to the loco should be in the bag and so on. It also comes with this really slick. Uh, gold, um, I'm guessing it's brass, but it's gold colored um, nameplate as well. Um, but the main thing for today, uh, you can see it gives you some information about the prototype, a little bit about the buffer beam detailing, and so on. Uh, more about the prototype. And now, the thing is, this is really, really vague, right? So, um, what they intend you to do is to um, look at photos, be aware of the, the type of logo and where the parts go, and then uh, sort of up to you how you um, add those detailing parts. One of the things that I wanted to do today though, we'll probably make this a multi-part video or something like that, but um, I want to do the um, head code. So if you look at the logo, if I pick it up here and you can see, um, the actual head code is illuminated, but it's blank right now. They, there's no um, default one in there. Now some manufacturers will put a default one in there, um, but Helgen have decided not to do that. And so um, there's a bunch of head codes on here. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pick uh, one for freight and stick it on one end, one for passenger and stick it on the other end. And um, I'm gonna try to use one that's prototypical from some of the photos that we've been looking at. Um, and so once that's done, uh, we'll show you how to put on the uh, NEM coupling. And then um, we'll also show you um, possibly some of the buffer beam detail. I don't want to really do too much buffer beam detail in this video because um, like I said I want to go in and look at the prototype some more and not rush it. Um, obviously if I don't put it on today uh, it's something I can do later. If I put it on wrong or I put too much on um, it, it's going to be on there. Um, so I think for today we're going to just do the head codes and uh, take a look inside. So first step is basically open it up. So um, I use these uh, containers uh, to put some of the parts in. Uh, so what I'm going to do is throw uh, all the stuff that came with it in there so I don't lose it. And we're going to use the scissors here in a minute to cut out the codes we want to use. But first of all, we're going to try to um, open this up. So according to the instructions, um, there are some clips. Um, it looks like um, they're right here and right here on either end. So what we're going to try to do is basically separate it from the body very carefully. Um, now, while this was a lower cost loco, and um, because it was on sale, it's still, you know, not cheap, so we don't want to really damage it. And you can see there, once it comes away from one side, um, what you need to do is then just move it slightly away. So you can see I've moved it slightly away from the shell. And we flip it over the other side. And then it's sort of, you want to use your fingers to keep it pressure on it so it doesn't clip back in. And at the same time, you want to go in, click, 
if you want to go and unclick it on this side as well. And if you do it right, it should hopefully for any reason pop off and you won't have to pry it a little bit. And there we go. So if you're going to do a DCC decoder, for example, um, you would go and uh, remove the dummy DCC plug, put in your DCC decoder, and uh, you'd be good to go there. Uh, here you can see the circuit board isn't exactly uh, surface mount or anything like that. It's all serviceable. Even these resistors that they have in here are, are huge. Um, so it's not exactly your, um, your kind of harder to, to mess with sort of... Um, circuit board so we're going to leave that alone though um, you can see here if we needed to uh, lubricate it um, there's some mechanisms here this is running pretty well uh, sometimes if they've been on uh, old stock especially some of the bargains they may have sat there for quite some time but this one is uh, is pretty okay so we're not going to mess with it and we're fact we're going to set this aside because we don't need to mess with it and uh, for what we're going to do um, so all right, so it's taken me a couple of minutes to figure this out, but um, basically it's really, really simple and it's actually um, pretty clever. Um, basically all you have to do on the back is uh, gain access um, to this part right here by removing the um, back piece and then just uh, push it out with a um, you know, uh, toothpick or something and then the glass comes out, you can place the, um, the piece inside and then uh, put the glass back over it and you're done. So I'm gonna go and reassemble uh, this side and then uh, you can see here, the other side still needs to be done. So I'll show you how to do that. All right, so uh, just to recap, you can see we put um, one Z zero zero on uh, one end. Uh, one is a uh, passenger freight or test trains. Uh, Z is a um, code for, for, passenger, for uh, passenger trains and zero zero is just a route number. Um, on the other end, uh, we're going to put uh, 9E61, uh, as you can see there, uh, we've cut that already out, uh, if I show you the, let's come out, that's how it looks like on the sheet, uh, and you can select the codes, there's various websites where you can look up uh, what these are, um, 9 I believe is a Passenger Express, um, E is a Passenger or a Passenger with a Freight, and 61 is the uh, train number. So uh, we're gonna go and uh, show you how to um, install that on uh, the other end here. Uh, so one thing you gotta be careful about is if you uh, look down in here, uh, you will see uh, there's a red piece uh, that does the uh, the lighting. Um, this kind of broke a little bit on the other end, so I had to end up gluing it uh, back into place, but hopefully I'll avoid it this time around. Um, um, so I'm going to do stick the screwdriver and just uh, gently pry it out on either end. Hopefully, uh, you can see this, um, and that yeah, pops right out. Um, and this piece here, the long piece or the short piece, is pressed up against the um, the glass um, or transparent plastic in this case. So what we're going to do next is simply uh, take the uh, toothpick and just push down on the glass and it should hopefully come out. Yeah. And you can see there, uh, carefully, it, it, um, it's popped out. So we're just going to carefully set that aside and then um, you've got access there to the train number spot and this makes it very easy I thought maybe I was gonna have to fish it in from behind or something like that um, but it is not so it's gonna be a little difficult for me to do on camera so I'm gonna try maybe standing up um, it's pretty well designed um, you just uh, drop it in there and just um, I've been touching it with the, uh, the toothpick just to make sure it's the right size and then uh, make sure you didn't get any fingerprints on the glass, um, no matter if it's on the outside glass, you can always clean that with the inside. Um, that would get annoying. And then all you do is just use the toothpick to push it down into place so it clicks. Uh, it hasn't quite clicked into place all the way from here. Um, and it 
might not go on the first go, in which case, um, you just pry the glass back out. Make sure it is in correctly, and then drop it back in. I assume there's only one way these will go, or just you know it'll go in either way. But um, it is a bit fiddly. Hasn't driven me nuts yet, but. I think you might have to angle it down on one end and there you go. And it's in and then uh, if it doesn't quite look straight you can use the toothpick to just sort of flatten it out on the back like so and there you go looks, uh, looks pretty good the glass is still pushed in and clipped in so we have one side zero zero on one side. And this side we have ninety sixty one. So uh, it's again one side zero zero, and then ninety sixty one on that end. Uh, of course, I remembered that the first one I used was the front end of Loco. Uh, you just want to make sure you you don't lose the orientation. Um, so the next part is just to put this back in. Um, flick it around. So this is kind of fiddly. Uh, you just want to make sure that that piece is uh, pointing inwards. Um, you would think that it wouldn't be that fiddly, but I ended up having to use tweezers on the other end to line it up. It kind of has to go in at an angle like that. And then just take the toothpick and try to push it down into the holes. There's two holes there. Um, really need to get an overhead light for this section so I'm going to shop some of the Christmas deals tomorrow or it will be today by the time you see this video um, and it'll the only thing you don't want to do is break it so you just got to be patient with it until it clips in sometimes you got to pull it back out but and definitely it's not once you clip in all the way so I'm going to have to back it out a little bit on one side be in at an angle like I said if it doesn't work pop it back out try again It needs to be. If you can hear some screaming in the background. It's my uh, older son playing Xbox. Um, Try to tell him to be quiet, but you know that doesn't work with twelve-year-old. Um, but it's kind of his fault. There's a double row rail channel, so we'll um, we'll we'll let him off today. I'm doing this in real time too, so you can see just exactly how freaking fiddly this thing is. Um, it's also a little trickier to do it when you try to show what you're doing on camera while doing it. Uh, while being somewhat conscious of the lighting and the camera angle. Hopefully this will actually show up in the video. It's one side in. You definitely don't want to force these things, so if it doesn't go in, you're doing something wrong, and you gotta figure out what that is. Alright, I'm 
dog hair in the mix. It's no good. Because I'm fine on one side, the other side does not want to get in for some reason. Could be that this front piece just isn't going in far enough. There's a little piece here on the front that's supposed to push up against the thing. It looks like it's not going in all the way. It might be because I've pushed the glass in too far. I'm gonna pop that back out and see if it goes in. Without it in there. So you can see that I've popped it back out. Okay, so what I've done is I've put this back in. It seems to have gone in better without the glass in there. And I didn't have this problem later, so what I'm going to do is put this back in with that black piece in and see maybe that helps it at all. I'm going to put my finger on the back of this too because definitely do not want it to um, so I'm going to position it with a toothpick and here we go again because this was a real pain but hopefully it will cooperate Push down on it, and it goes into place. So, yep, yeah, there you have it. So, guess um, I was okay with this end, but then I had broken this piece, and so maybe that was part of the issue. So, um, you know, remove this black piece here to get access to it, pop that out. And I guess uh, once you got the glass popped out, um, push this back in first, then put the um, thing in on the outside, and that seems to work okay. So. Once again, we have the 1Z00 on one side and 9861 on the other. So, um, this is now going to get put back together. Um, oh, um, I'm going to show you how to do the NEM coupling. So, I think I might just do the NEM coupling first. Um, that's in this box of goodies. Um, in a future video, I'll show you how to attach these. Kind of a bit of a rush today. Um, need to uh, upload the last of the double rail uh, Christmas videos and unfortunately yesterday we had a little issue with our cat so um, cat's doing okay um, it's kind of back from the dad uh, it's a resuscitate him um, but he's he's doing a lot better now uh, he had some kind of seizure stopped breathing and, uh, took him to the vet real quick they uh, gave us some medication and stuff so cat's doing okay but it's a bit of a scare it's how we started off our Christmas Eve and so unfortunately I didn't get to uh, upload this video and work on this loco um, Christmas Eve morning like I had planned so that's why the, the Christmas Eve video uh, came out on Christmas Day but um, cat's doing good and uh, this loco is uh, on its way to being uh, going on a layout so uh, it's in standard NIM coupling so you're just going to squeeze uh, the two pieces in and uh, connect it in um, you can see here there is a, a connector for it and it's attached to the buffer somewhat so uh, you'll have to excuse the dog here we have uh, Alaskan Malamute and she sheds everywhere doesn't even come down here still dog hair um, so what you want to do is basically put it in on one side if I'm showing this on the camera and it's, yeah, I hate these things it also doesn't help that it's moving around so I'm going to have to hold it carefully there we go nope, not quite it's 
straight. It's gonna go straight in. Because I'm doing it this way. I don't normally do on this upside down like this. I normally do on the layout. And it's a little trickier because I'm trying to show you guys on the camera. Which is pointed upright. There we go. And it's clipped into place. So normally, and you can see there, that's part of the problem. It's why they don't um, attach all the buffer beam detail. It's going to have some problems going around curves and stuff like that. Um, typically what I do is I attach this to just one end. Um, I don't normally attach it to the other end unless I am um, needing to do so for some reason. That way I can attach all the buffer beam detail on one end and then leave the other end for the, um, for the train and so on. So of course what I've done is I wasn't paying attention. I see that halogen have already attached some of the buffer beam detail to this end. So I'm going to now have to remove it and put it in the other end. Uh, the reason for that is this has no buffer beam detail at all. So um, I can imagine I'm kind of rushed to making a few mistakes. But yeah, you get to see me do it again. So we're going to put the loco down. Um, carefully not to apply too much pressure to it because you really don't want to break any of the stuff. There you go. And it's clipped right in. So here on this end we can attach some of the um, extra buffer beam detail if we wanted to. Um, and then do this end where it's completely not attached. Now usually um, halogen are pretty good. They, they leave one end with no buffer beam detail and leave the other end with some so you can attach what you want. Alright, so uh, the only other thing is you, know, you might want to put that on the body shell whichever way you plan on using the most. Um, luckily for us it's already been that way. Alright, so we're going to now reattach the body shell. Um, it should be relatively easy. Uh, there's nothing else we're going to do um, to the loco, and so hopefully this will just reattach pretty, pretty straightforward. And um, you're going to want to basically do the reverse. So you're going to take your fingers and just sort of pull it apart, um, so it comes over the top. Um, and it, you will. This will probably take some doing. So you want to line it up on the front end. So when you line it up, there's Two pieces I touch there, and they slide into this piece right here, and they slide into that piece right there. So you just want to line that up so that it's right, and then you just kind of want to pry it apart and make sure that it pushes down. There's an awful lot of play in it though, so. There we go. Let's get one side in, and you're going to do the same thing on the other. Hopefully, it'll just clip in like so. And there you have it. And just do, oh, it's not fully attached. Let's see, um, make sure that it's clipped in. Just a little click. Okay, so I see what part of the problem is here. If you see here, these clips haven't lined up. So the body shell must only go on one way. Um, so let's pull that off. Flip it around. Let's see if it lines up better this way. Again, you want to line this piece up. There's a groove there. Um, 
like that. And you just basically want to do the reverse. Yeah. So it must have only going in one way, which is kind of handy. Thank you, Halogen. So I don't want to stop myself from putting it on the wrong way. Um, trying to find the clips. Yeah, they're right here and right there. And as you saw there, when I had it on the wrong way, it wouldn't clip in. So now it's clipped in properly. And we're good to go. So it looks like our buffer beam one's 9E61, which is what we wanted. And then our end without the buffer beam is uh, 1Z00. That looks a lot better. All right, so next up we're going to go show this running on the layout. And of course, you'll see it in the, the Christmas video as well. Uh, in an upcoming look at Works Wednesday, uh, we'll show you how to attach the extra buffer beam detail as well as the fancy name plates but for now I'm gonna leave it at that so hope you enjoyed this video uh, we will leave you with some shots of it running on the layout so you can see the final thing uh, going on obviously you saw me manhandling this thing pretty well so when you do this uh, make sure you have clean hands and so on um, I left in the mistakes and you know, just so you can see because there's no you know right way wrong way of doing this you kind of have to figure it out as you go along it's one of the nice things about mall railways um, so you can see there um, I saw it wouldn't go on the right way um, I saw that the clips weren't lined up and so while that's not documented in there um, you can figure that out pretty easily had I forced that would have pushed the body cell on there and, and possibly broken it so you just have to be careful and you, you know manufacturers have these kind of cool things like Elgin did there and they're not always not always documented so um, hopefully you found this video useful if you have one of these logos obviously now you know how to put on the um, put on this head codes and I've figured out some of the stuff for you. Alright, so just to recap before we wrap up, uh, you take the body shell off, pry it on each side. Pry one, remember, unlike me, um, which side do you, um, you take it off from. Um, you pop out the um, little black piece on the inside of the body shell, pop out the glass, pop back in the little black piece, then put in the, um, the head codes put the uh, plastic piece back in, do the other side. While you have the body shell off, it's easier to put the uh, the NEM coupling on. And then probably also to put on the body uh, front buffer beam detail as well. And then um, clip the body shell back on, make sure you put it back on the right way. Don't make the mistake I did. Uh, you can see that it lines up. Hopefully you saw that in the video. All right, so that's it for this video. We'll show you it running on the layout and uh, hopefully uh, you guys have had a good Christmas. All right, that's it for today, and until next time.